Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais in Ontario, Canada, with episode number 28 of the Yacking Podcast. This is where we talk about life, business, and more to bring you tips and ideas for the changing world that we're living in right now. As always, we have interesting guests for you, and today is no exception. So I'm first going to welcome my co-host Kathleen in Kitchener, and she will introduce our guest. Hello, Kathleen. Welcome to the show. Hello, Peter. And as always, thank you to all of you for tuning in. We so appreciate you and as well as your comments. And yes, of course, Peter, we always have interesting people to interview on this show. And today we have Mohsen Abdullah. He is the CEO and founder of Token Creative Services. He's also a fabulous mentor for the Chamber of Commerce for the Kitchener-Waterloo area. I look up to him too. And without further ado, welcome, Mohsen. How are you? Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Peter, for having me on your show and Kathleen for introducing me and inviting me to this. It's, uh, it's, I'm super grateful. Well, it's great to have you. And I'm just going to leave it to you, Mosen, to tell our viewers and our listeners a little bit about yourself, about your background and how you came to uh, create Token Creative Services. How did it come up? Definitely. Um, so again, yeah, my name is Mosen. And uh, I created Token Creative Services around five years ago with my co-founder, Jordan. Um, both of us had our own specialty. Uh, I was more on the media side of it, and uh, Jordan was more on the development side. We had started something up where we really wanted to have some close friends and family that we knew that were you know, involved in different services, whether it's creative, development, uh, design. And we wanted them to have I, I, some jobs through us. So we, we kind of created some environment where we would try to get them clients and then we'd work all together to, to solve one solution, which ended up turning into a much bigger thing. We ended up uh, hiring a lot more people and uh, started working closer with projects, which we then figured that it was more than just the services that we, that we needed to offer. It was more of the strategy and in identifying what the company truly meant to them and, and to find that driving force, what, you know, what they, what they drive towards and what's their why and, and to really put that together to build them a really good, strong uh, marketing strategy to increase their ROI, build brand awareness. So we're up to 22 people now and wow. uh, it's, it's been five years of, of excitement and it's only, I feel like the, it's only going to get better now. The party just got started. So um <laughs> From now, Token it has uh, uh, pivoted a little bit more to a, a specific niche, and uh, we're, we're now an impact agency, so we do want to help companies that are truly making an impact in our world. Um, so we're trying to focus on helping those companies uh, be bigger and better and to, to be more recognized within their community and just the world overall. So I think us making small incremental changes can make one big change uh, in the world together. Can you tell us a little bit more about these impact, uh, about the niche itself and, and how you're helping them specifically? Definitely, yes. Yeah. So an impact brand would be someone who is making the world more sustainable, uh, whether it's economically, uh, environmentally. So companies that are uh, creating AI robots that are now uh, making, people always are afraid that AI robots are taking away jobs. Well, these are actually creating bigger and better jobs and taking away uh, the dangers for, for humans, um, whether that's mine removal, uh, agricultural farming that uh, you know has caused issues in the past, um, we're trying to trying to let these robots uh, take over uh, the the things that humans were putting themselves in danger for. That's just one specific thing. There's technology uh, such as uh, automation, um, agile, which is a, a methodology of mm -hmm. organization. Uh, we're really trying to use these uh, companies that are trying to make the world bigger and better and a little bit safer for us um, and, and really putting together their strategy. Um, just kind of the way that we work with a, a lot of our industries, they, they may be really good at doing what they love to do, but they may not be the best at getting the word out and, and you know, getting their message across. So we're almost a translator to try to make sure that, you know, we take their technical knowledge and, and translate it into something that the market can see and uh, hopefully get invested into. Oh, wow. Well, well done. Uh, you just touched a little bit on services. Can you delve a little bit more into and explain to our viewers exactly what types of services you provide for your clients? 
Definitely. So again, how I said in the beginning, I was more on the media side. So my passion still lies in photography and filmmaking. Um, as a musician from, from pretty much my childhood, uh, I really loved connecting the visual arts to, uh, to music. And uh, I, I slowly started to grow this a bit more and started to find that there was this beautiful synchronicity between services. So um, our, our company offers full web design, development, graphic design, social media, um, filmmaking, uh, full development services. Uh, with all of these services that we have, we have a specialist and a team behind each one. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, each service is all in-house so that it keeps everything consistent. Um, and, and, and that's what kind of really drove us. But in the end, it's, it's that, that bridge between the two services or the multiple services that we specialize in. So um, our developers know how to talk to our designers. Our photographers already know how everything our web developers will like ahead of time. And it's, it's that bridge between each service that, that kind of makes us special uh, in comparison to a lot of other companies that outsource. Wow, very good. I, I'm going to endorse what you're just saying about um, all the services under one roof. I, I built websites myself and I do everything myself and I'm lucky I can do that. But I help a church out with their website and um, I made some recommendations about themes and they didn't listen to me. They took on a theme that wasn't very good and then they're hosting it in one place uh, but someone else is the admin and to try and help them do anything is absolutely impossible you know so and as business people you know most of the time you haven't got time to fiddle with all these things so someone like you <clears throat> wow that's that's a real answer I wanted to ask you something else and that was um, <clears throat> I've heard from people who know you better than I do that you have a unique gift for talking to your clients and then, then seeing something they don't see very quickly. So in with my British background, we have a saying, you, you can't see the wood from the trees or something like that, uh, which often applies in your own business. But you seem to have, um, have that ability. So how did that come about, uh, Mason? Uh, I think uh, a lot of it was um, based off of me... Uh, uh, it, it came back to my music. I think mm -hmm. that was my main... My main uh, emotional empathetic avenue that I kind of discovered where I would talk to certain friends while just playing the piano, just nonchalant, nothing crazy. And I would find that the different frequencies that I would play, the different notes, whether it's minor or major, uh, would affect the way that the conversation were. Right. Right. Um, it almost unraveled. And, and again, I, I've always told myself that I one day I will do a token talk on frequencies or a TED talk even bigger. Yeah. Um, and it, it was just the way that I can manipulate in a good way, <laughs> the, sure. the way that I can get them to tell me things that uh, may be difficult when I was playing certain other frequencies, which then took me a little bit further into discovering uh, an incredible author, Simon Sinek, who, oh, yes. who uh, wrote the book Start With Why, which with really why, yeah. resonated with me. Um, and it was it was kind of like the root of the understanding of why I think uh, the why is so much more important than the what and the how. Um, I, I had a, I had always competition when I, when I played a, in music where there would be students who'd be playing way, way better and, you know, have been playing much longer than I have. But I find that I would capture more attention because I had a why behind why I played the music and in what drove me behind it. Less of, I was trying to show off on how good my technical skills were, which then kind of had the revelation as a young kid that you don't have to be the best at what you do in order to be successful at it. You need to be able to market what you do best Absolutely. versus be the best at it. Yeah, I, interesting. I can um, echo what you're saying, um, Molson, because I know that you and I had a consultation and we'll get into that a little bit in a little bit, but you were just, uh, you're right. It's the why, isn't it? And most businesses, a lot of businesses forget about that. They get into what they do and fail to, to explain why they do it. And you brought that out in me. And I, I so appreciate that because I think it just, you, people have to understand what it is that makes you tick and why is it that you're doing what you're doing. Anybody can say what they're doing, but why is a different story. So I can appreciate that. I always say that real estate agents are the worst for that. They, they remind you a million times in a day that, oh, I'm a realtor. It's like, oh, we know. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, know. Not. we know you're a realtor. You've uh, said that the last 6,000 times to us. But no one ever really tells us why they want to sell a house, right? Like, show the empathy behind it. 
And I think understanding empathy versus sympathy, Brene Brown does a really good uh, Mm -hmm. animation on this. And a lot of people think that they're empathizing when they're just sympathizing, you know, the at least you have this or it's not as bad as you think versus that's not what people want to hear. You need to be beside that person. You need to put yourself in that person's shoe. And, uh, you know, everyone handles things differently. And you can really resonate this with your customers and even your employees. Uh, Culture is what drives your company. And I think having that, you know, definition in mind is is important but that's a huge topic oh yes dive right into (laughs) Mason let me ask you something else I'm very interested in the uh, music analogy what else do you play do you concentrate on the piano is that your specialty so I I did piano when I I I started when I was nine years old and then uh, during high school I did uh, or grade school to high school I did um, a violin Really? I actually wanted to be a cellist, but yeah. um, I was uh, four foot nine, and uh, <laughs> apparently there was no cello small enough for me. Uh, luckily, I did grow to five ten by grade twelve. It only took till grade twelve to get to that height, but I was uh, pushed to the violin, which wasn't my first choice, but definitely opened up another avenue. I'm sure, um, as uh, it was just uh, another thing. My my main goal was not to be captain of a sports team, but was to be a concert master. Which, concert master, right. Which, which I did get to. So that was my sports goal for... for <laughs> well done. For well done. Yeah. I think it's so important. Um, I, I t- without wasting time, because you're the star of this show, my experience was quite different. I went to a very British-oriented school in Africa, and uh, conditions in those days were, were a bit harsh on pupils. And in my second music lesson, my teacher said, you were absolutely useless. <laughs> you're never going <laughs> to... Honestly, honestly, you're never going to play a music instrument. You're never going to be able to sing or read music. So for next week's class, bring a book and sit in the corner because you're disturbing the rest of the class. And, you know, I believed that for 40 years. For 40 years, I believed I was useless. And then I needed a big goal, and I went out and bought a guitar. And I taught myself how to play, not well. Taught myself to read music, took lessons, and I can play not well, but I've played the odd tune in church. So it just shows, you know. Um, and I affects you. Absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about, about the different frequencies. If I hear or play certain music, it lifts my mood straight away. If I hear or play other stuff, I think, oh, you know, that's, that's not so good. Anyway, um, so I think it's interesting. You, your your story on music is, is really powerful. Thank you for sharing that one with us. While I've got you, because um, Kathleen's got some more things she wants to ask you, I'm going to get in quick. <laughs> With all the changes that are going on because of the virus shutdown and all the, all the rapid pivots and upheavals in business generally, do you see that uh, a lot of customers generally, or a lot of businesses, not just your customers, will have to rely a lot more on online marketing over the next few years going forward? Definitely. And, and again, it depends on the industry. Uh, I find that a lot of when, when the pandemic did hit, there was a lot of craze that happened where, um, and you know what, like business owners did become a bit selfish as they should have, you know, they, they wanted to keep themselves safe. They sure. built a barrier. They cut all the unnecessary costs and a lot of them were marketing costs. Yep. Um, and as a marketing firm, that, that was a really big hit for us. Um, internally, our company obviously did, wasn't as affected because we're used to working online, but these, these companies did kind of prevent, you know, they thought that they had to cut everything, not realizing that if you were going to cut all your online marketing just because of COVID um, means that the competitors that aren't going to cut it are going to now compete against you even harder. Yep. Yep. Google is a ranking system. You have to pay as you grow here, right? Like there is yep. a bit of, there is a bit of, um, you know, hierarchy in the sense where if you came there first, there, you're going to be promoted. But um, we did kind of help the businesses stay online by offering a COVID um, crisis program where we were building three Shopify stores for these, these companies okay. that were brick and mortar based stores. So like, I feel like online marketing and uh, online sales, as much as, you know, the online sales for certain companies definitely went up, but uh, I, I kind of diverted this question a bit, but right. uh, it, uh, it's uh, interesting to see the way that things went uh, for certain customers. Okay. You know, you a good point, Mohsen, when in terms of marketing, uh, it seems like when people are under a crunch, especially businesses are under a crunch, marketing seems to, you know, it's one of the things that gets axed off the budget. But in fact, wouldn't you agree that that's when perhaps you need to put more dollars into your marketing for that very reason and, and maybe 
cut the budget in other other places other than marketing. What do you what do you think of that? I definitely think that's important. I, I think um, we we get afraid that you know the money that's external that you don't always see. Um, I find that marketing is a very intangible thing. Um, obviously with photo and video, that's a little bit different where you can see the results, but a lot of like online advertising campaigns, you physically can't hold your results. You see the, the phones ringing or you don't see the phones ringing. And I find that even during a pandemic, when people may not be getting their windows installed because you're a window manufacturing company, that doesn't mean you should be cutting that. That means that they may not be calling you right now. They may have you on their list of companies they're going to call once they feel they're, they're secure Marketing is so important. You need to keep your awareness out there. You need to keep reminding people the, you know, why you do what you do, what you offer and how you're going to help them, you know, solve whatever the issue that or not issue that they have, whatever the, the needs that they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because you cover everything under one roof, I, I, an interesting thing I've seen, I follow um, a marketing guru from advertising guru from uh, Texas, Roy Williams. I, I don't know if you know, heard of him. He publishes a, a memo called the Monday morning memo and he runs a sort of private university for marketing and he's, he's quite <coughs> eccentric and, um, and not like a normal advertising guy. And he says what he's found is that during the pandemic, people have his customers have increased their online advertising the ones who've done really well have increased their radio advertising at the same time he says suddenly you've got all these people sitting at home and they're listening to radio so he's found that by combining the two radio has it, it's really produced results so that's an interesting one you know As kathleen sorry i stole mosin's attention for a while you you've got something else you want to ask him you carry on <laughs> I do. I know that on your website, Mosen, you, uh, you offer a free consultation, which I think is so generous of you to do that. And we also touched on some of your niche markets, the, the, the companies that, you know, provide an impact to the environment. But is there other company, are there other companies out there that other industries that you specialize in? Or is, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Obviously, all the companies that we they, we currently work with may not be making the the impact that we want them to be making. Um, I think that's a, that's a huge goal, and I think that's something that we want to kind of set in our in our ways and hopefully work towards you know working with extremely large companies in, in the future. But obviously, right now, that's uh, we we work we work with pretty much anyone who is passionate. Um, I it a lot of the things that customers tend to do when they show up in our meetings is they'll, they'll try to scope us out as an agency, as they should be, and to make sure, you know, that they, they like us, they like our pricing. But just to throw them off, the first thing that I tell them is that as much as you are here to scope us out, we're going to scope you right back to see if this is even a fit. Good. Because my team is so passionate about everything that they do that if they find that they can't have the passion towards your company, irregardless of how much money you want to spend, we will make the decision if we want to work with you. And, and, a, and a lot of that is the impact, right? Like, is your company making an imp, a positive impact on my team? In the end, it may not be this crazy big impact that we're, we're wanting your company to be doing, but it, is there some sort of happiness? Is there a connection um, in the room that we can find? I, I've worked with projects that we knew in the beginning, you know, sure, the money was great. And, you know, as a young business owner, you're going to bite any, any bait that comes your way just to, to keep alive not realizing that it actually took double the resources we've lost money off of them and it wasn't the smart decision. So wow. I think uh, to go back on, on if we're working with non impact based brands, uh, yes, like we, we want to help anyone who's, you know, in the area or, or even online, you know, not from our, our specific geographic area to, to see if we can actually truly, you know, see the passion that they have for their business, understand what, why they do what they do and, and provide a service and a solution more of um, that, that will work best for them. Very good. I think that's important. Um, just uh, Kathleen and I have been talking about our, we have separate businesses and we work together on another one, you know, and one of the most, the one that we have the most fun on is this, is what we're doing right now. Is it interviewing interesting people? And, uh, and we, we love it. And so it comes back to what you say, unless you enjoy what you're doing, you know, you, <clears throat> life was too short for the rest of it. Uh, <clears throat> what, what do you see down the road? We got a bit of time left, Mosin. Um, what's the new normal for business in six months, in a year? Just a general, what's your, what's your crystal ball telling you? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, uh, it looks like <laughs> um, I'm actually I'm actually seeing that uh, even with uh, COVID being, let's say, it's completely eliminated by tomorrow, which isn't likely, but let's say uh, hypothetically it is, there's going to be a a caution around everyone. Uh, we're going to all have our walls up a bit more, and we're going to feel a bit more of a boundary. You know, um, we did get pretty loose with our social our, our, our socializing prior to COVID. And I feel like this is almost uh, straightened people up and in, in, in not a, in any good or bad way, just mm-hmm. in, a, in a personal way that people will feel a little bit more protected um, to stay on their own and to work from home and, and to not go out as much. And when they go out to make it meaningful and to make sure the people that they bring with them have meaning to them. So I feel like because of the way that business is going, making sure to have an online presence so that those people don't have to go and physically shop around for you um, will be super important. Um, to be very direct with your customers and with what exactly you want to offer them mm-hmm. uh, and, and to be straight to the point. Like I find a lot of companies try to try to encompass too many things thinking more they have, better they have versus what I think you should just, you know, like if you're offering something, be very specific have very various different ways for them to visit your store, uh, whether it's online, if it's in person, have some good procedures in place to make them feel comfortable. Um, we, as much as this is going to go away, hopefully in the future, we still need to kind of pretend, you know, that it, it has scarred people. It's definitely scarred me um, in, in good ways and in bad ways. Um, so we just need to kind of go forward and put ourselves in the, the mindset of others of what they felt like, you know, as a business owner or as, as just sure, a consumer sure. and really try to market that way. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a pivot. It is, but I think you're right. There was a survey on uh, the homepage of my internet provider today. Uh, do you think it's too soon to open the U.S. border? 90% of Canadians think it's too soon to open the border of the U.S. And, you know, despite all the implications for travel, holidays, families, 90% still think it's it's too serious to open it. So, So if you were an investment advisor, um, what sort of industries would you be telling your clients not to invest in right at the moment? Oh, not (laughs) to invest. That's that's a tricky question. Um, Cruise lines is perhaps an obvious one. Cruise ships is might be an obvious one. Definitely do not invest in that. Uh, any any cluster based uh, yeah. organization, I find that like uh, a lo- it's it's really sad. Some of the local events that I am a huge supporter of, such as the Summer Lights Festival, which happens right. in, in the KW region, we've just become partners with them to help them stay online uh, and to to prevent that uh, that spread to go further. Um, but I, I find that. Uh, to not invest into things that uh, that are not listening to the guidelines that are that are doing things behind uh, the consumer's back in, in the sense of you know they're they're trying to be too lenient or they're trying to be ahead of the curve um, before there's any regulations being set. Um, my sister and brother-in-law are both doctors, so I, I kind of hear one really strong opinion and and I look at them as my providers of knowledge. Right. And I look at them for that. And they said that companies that are really not taking certain parts serious for sure, you know, have your precaution. Those are companies that you got, you want to kind of keep your distance from because if they're being loose on the front end, then you don't know what they're doing on the back end. Mm. And um, it's, it's just a bit wary. Sure. I, I, I fear, um, and I don't want to be negative, that some industries have been, will be irrevocably changed by mm-hmm. this. And I think the cruise cruise ships is a prime example of that. So interesting times ahead, but there's also going to be advantages for other businesses. So Kathleen? I, I have a question for you, Moss, and I know if m- m- people go to your website and we'll give the URL in, in a little bit, um, there's, you've partnered with other organizations and companies. Can you tell us about your associations? Yeah, for sure. So I th- I think uh, when we first started, um, we uh, my co-founder Jordan was just in love with making partners with a whole bunch of different associations. And at first, I didn't really understand. I thought, you know, what, like sure, it sounds like a good idea. You're you're the developer here. I'm going to just trust you. Not realizing that these partners uh, are more than just a, a a logo on our website. Yeah. Um, I've come and I told him and we refined it over the last couple of years that every partner we have on our website should be a personal relation, should have a mix of online and personal. Because if I'm going to refer someone to a, a company because they're our partner, I want to make sure I have that personal connection to it. 
Um, so one of our big one is that we are uh, one of the few Shopify experts in town. Um, Shopify did end up stopping this program, the expert status program, uh, and we got this a few years ago. So we, we were one of the last people to, to actually get the certification. And to me, I hold this really close to our heart because um, at this moment in time, helping businesses go online, we've actually used our partnership program sure. by, by using the Shopify platform to help these brick and mortar stores really try to make a difference. And, and a quick little thing on that, uh, we have a, an upcoming training uh, platform called brickandmortar.online, which will be soon a platform where people who want to build a store, who may not know how to build a store, will be able to go here to get free resources from an agency who's going to be you know, creating some thought leadership and try to get some other people in the community to really bring their knowledge together so that everyone can benefit out of it. Uh, topics such as photography for your store or development, design, whatever it may be, it's a non for profit it's a purely resource-based website that's going to be helpful for people who, who may not know how to build their own store and may not have the budget to go to an agency to do so. so I'm going to jump, I'm gonna jump in quickly and, and just endorse what you're saying. I have a shop to Shopify store and I use it to sell my book and to help my son who was growing vegetables to sell at farmer's markets, believe it or not. So I, I like Shopify, but uh, if someone can take advantage of uh, your expertise, it'll smooth that curve for them exponentially. So I would highly recommend any of our viewers or listeners get hold of us and if you want to learn about Shopify. All right, back to you, Kathleen. Sorry, I had to jump in with that one because the Shopify is good. No, anything else, Mosin, that you would like to share with our viewers and listeners? Off that topic, Peter, I know that uh, um, you mentioned that, uh, that you use Shopify and that you would have those questions. And I think that's something important where maybe we could ask the viewers and, and the listeners to ask us questions about mm -hmm. things that they wish they could have known uh, prior to starting a store or things that they would like to know. It's, it's only going to give us more insight to know exactly how to cater to, to the market that, that we're surrounded by. Um, obviously, there's a lot of great things that we want to come up with. Um, I, I work closely with the Chamber of Commerce in our area, like Kathleen had mentioned. Uh, and uh, just this earlier on this year, uh, I was actually uh, given the Volunteer of the Year Award, which uh, was a, a great surprise. Very um, good. And yeah. less of a brag, more of a, an appreciation to the, you know, the resonation of the community support. And it's, uh, it's really, really nice to have such an incredible community. I think uh, our region is just blessed to have such a great amount of people who all truly care about each other. Uh, I love facilitating these uh, certain meetings and, and just being a part of everything. Um, I think a lot of people find that you, you think you need to have money to, to support the community. And in reality, yeah. money is one part of the problem, but Absolutely. there's a lot more you can offer from just your personal self. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on that award. We, we're running out of time. So I think it's time for you to tell our viewers and listeners how to get hold of you, how to contact you. Definitely. Um, so you can contact us at imagine at tokencs.ca, or you can personally contact me at Mosin, that's M-O-H-S-A-N, at tokencs.ca. Um, Kathleen had mentioned we offer free consultations. These can be done online or in person in the future once things loosen up a bit. Um, I'd love to talk to you. You can talk to one of our specialists um, in, in the industry of your choice, and um, hopefully we can help you with the uh, with planning a bit more, again, this is not to upsell you on anything. It's purely just to get you excited and invigorated. And I know that Kathleen is used to me asking her, what's her why? So <laughs> it's, it's, it's more to just get you more involved and closer to your business and to see an outside perspective. Thanks very much, Moss. And Kathleen, have you got any last words there? I so appreciate you being here with us today, Moss. And I was really looking forward to this interview. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, and thanks from me on my side and thanks to our viewers and listeners. And that's the end of another episode of the Yacking Podcast. And we will be back in a few days with another interesting guest. Thanks and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much.